when we were first putting a title on this section, we called it The Shadow of Desire, referring to Tennessee Williams' streetcar named Desire. Blanche Dubois in that play is an icon of a woman raised in patriarchy. She lives to please men. She takes her own value of herself by what they think of her. She is obsessed with knowing how she can allure men into what amounts to her trap. For that kind of woman, the, there is no way of working with the shadow until you recognize that it's the relationship to the father that is driving her. She is continually being ambushed by that little girl shadow. Just at the point where she seems to be standing up for herself, being the beautiful woman that she is, something comes in from underneath and cuts her off. She has to please daddy or daddy's surrogate. It would frighten her if she had to go in another direction and be who she actually is. So long as she is in the power of that shadow, she is not free. She's going to look for someone who can help her, someone who can put a projection on her to give her life, anything to escape living her own reality, which she can't find because the shadow is bigger than the ego. As Dr. Von Franz says, <coughs> excuse me, we cannot see our own backside. But if our ego could see it, it would find it contemptible. Because you see, we put out signs, unconscious signs. We don't even know we're putting those signs out. And we can see them in other people when they happen, and we can think, how could she do that? That's absolutely contemptible. But in ourselves, we either have to see it in projection or recognize it in the dreams and say, what is this? So to take that energy back, to recognize that this is the relation to the father that is being lived out is extremely important. The compounding difficulty is that this energy aligns itself with Mother Nature for the propagation of the race. And therefore, it may not show up in a marriage until the children are 16, 17, 20 years old. Then the woman is able to be who she is. But so many women, I remember once a woman said to me, I squeezed the children's orange juice this morning. They just ran out the door. They didn't drink my orange juice. Who am I if they don't drink my orange juice? And she meant it. That's when you have to really deal with this shadow and work it through to the place where the energy can be who you really are but you look at the energy with the father. Was it sexual or was it spiritual? Now we move on to animus, the Latin word for spirit. It personifies the logos, the rational thinking function. If a woman is married to him in his dark aspect, that is, she may be married to him in fact. She may also be married to him within herself. 
probably both. It may make her rigid and opinionated. She thinks she knows everything. When she's alone, she thinks she knows nothing. Her aloneness feels like ice and glass to herself and to others because her ideas are not her own. She has not bitten them off, chewed them, swallowed them, stomached them, digested them, and evacuated the waste. They are not part of her. And so there is an emptiness. She dreams that her teeth are falling out. We know these shadow figures well. We buy a new dress. We're going to a party. We look in the mirror. Hmm, not sure. Our partner or husband comes in and says, Oh, what a beautiful dress, darling. How lovely. How lusciously buxom you are. And that's enough to get Neggy really going. Neggy? Who is Neggy? One has to have voices for these other little creatures inside. Neggy is the negative animus. And if you have a word like that, you could say, that is his voice, not mine. And I'm not going to be put down by it. If that voice gets going, it's the end of the party. Because when it's inner, it's far more subtle. It's amazing how the inner animus finds the exact person outside to reflect him. The inner problem has to be worked out in the relationship. Otherwise, we just go out to the same disaster to work it out in another place. Sooner or later, if you are going to mature, it has to be faced. You have to separate the voices in yourself. If we leave empty space within ourselves or outside, it can fill quickly with vampire energy. That figure can literally take hold of the neck, separate the head from the body, separate the feelings that are coming from the musculature, from the inner body, from the thinking. That ends in loss of soul. The woman experiences herself as having been raped. Sexuality, loathing, and rage belong together. She loathes the man who would make love to a slut. This is where the love of one woman for another is essential for healing. It is also where the black Madonna can come into a dream with her great beating heart, take the dreamer on her lap, hold her close, and she can know that she can be herself, think how she wants to think, do what she wants to do, and be loved, because that's who she is. We have to remember that vampire creates vampire. Vampire movies are still very popular. And millionaire survivors are the competitors who can endure the most humiliation. Can anyone care about a million dollars for that? 
Bon France has emphasized that the face that we turn to the unconscious is the face that is reflected back to us. In other words, if we are angry, we often get an angry response back from the unconscious. If we are diffident, the same kind of diffidence comes back to us. It's very important when we feel ourselves being chased by a demon that we stop and hold. Instead of running, some people run for a lifetime away from this thing that is running after them. If we can just stop and turn around and say, what do you want? Bring in all the strength you've got to say it or to look this thing in the face. It's amazing how you may get an answer and it will tell you what it wants. It may say, I want to love you. I want to know you. I want you to know me. And the demonic may suddenly become the, its opposite. Remember those two energies that are in opposition, the contraries that make that huge energy once it starts to move. So to turn around and face that energy may be to turn the devil into Christ. Remember, Satan and Christ were half-brothers. And Lucifer does mean morning star. Just to illustrate how alike and how different those two faces are, I want to tell you a story. I had been in analysis about a year, and I suddenly fell into a real despair. No seeming reason for it. But I cannot endure inner chaos. So I decided that I would find out what was wrong with me and figure out how to cure it. I got all the books I needed from the library and I read day and night for a week. I figured out how all those complexes work, how they bang into each other, how they relate, and I knew what was wrong with me. And I went back to Dr. Bennett, full of joy, to tell him my great findings. And I talked for an hour, as fast as I could talk, and I saw that he was wilting in the chair, but the more he wilted, the faster I talked, and the more I ran over the very top of him. Not thinking, not realizing I was, not wanting to, but he was wilting. And I finally came to the end of my marvelous story with my great joy, realizing that there was some despair still simmering in the cellar. He helped me on with my coat. We went to the elevator. He turned to me and he said, Mrs. Woodman, if I were you, I would take my animus for a good drink. Now on the surface, that was a creative thing to do. I did put my animus to work. I did the best I could to come out of the doldrums. But in the actual situation, I rolled over him like an army tank. I left no room to see him, to relate to him in the moment. I simply was consumed with my own energy. This is the tragedy of this kind of negative well, we call, I call it the demon lover because it has the energy to be creative, a fiery spirit. But if it is not related, it is a killer spirit, not only outside, but inside. This is the energy that can move in anorexia 
when the, what should be the life force, the presence that is holding, the love that is holding, the giving other people a chance to open into their own being, when that is absent, that energy can lure a woman to her death.